Hello and welcome back to the Israeli Theater Training Mission videos. Uh, this video will, we will go over mission number five, the Delilah Men the Loop weapon. The Delilah is a long range, lightweight uh, Men in the Loop weapon, which is pretty much the ultimate hunter killer missile. It weighs about 500 pounds which means the warhead is very very small however it compensates on the small warhead with great range uh, it can reach targets roughly 120 nautical miles away from you and it has a loitering capability which means if you're not sure the target is there or you're not sure about the target identity you can tell the weapon the sent just go around and the missile will fly off uh, loop back and head back towards the target allowing, giving you a second or third chance to hit the target now as all many in the loop weapons uh, it requires dialing pod in this case the ASW 55 seen here uh, hanging on the uh, center line uh, and uh, this is the F-16I Sufa. Uh, let's unpause, go into the cockpit. I'm currently on autopilot in steering mode. And we'll go A to ground, turn on the weapon. And just set up the, p the cockpit for a second. And we'll have weapon here. Uh, we don't need the TGP at all. So we'll move the HSD again. As with the GBU-15, we have um, the pod has two antennas, the aft and the front, and uh, we will fly uh, a pattern illustrated in the uh, in the manual, a triangle of sorts uh, between the IP in waypoint six, the target in waypoint uh, seven, and the little dot red above Neva team in waypoint nine. And we'll, we'll do a little wiggle around because due to Falcon limitation, we cannot utilize the full 120 nautical miles, but we are limited uh, to stay within 80 miles of the target location unless we want to, uh, because if we're not inside those 80 nautical miles, we won't have a target to hit because Falcon. So, uh... Naturally, because of that fact, you can't go the 120, it's actually 80 nautical miles. The DLZ is just a recommendation. If you're under 70, you can hit the target. However, uh, flight time is limited to 23 minutes, uh, which means that the further uh, out you launch the weapon, you have less go rounds to do. If you launch from uh, 75 miles, flight time to the target is about 10 minutes, giving you two, maybe three go rounds. A go around is uh, you, it's configurable, but it's between uh, two and uh, the outbound. It's between two or three minutes, depends on the outbound leg and the turn, and then you have another minute or two into the target. So it goes up to five minutes per round if you go with the default go round. Everything is configurable from the MFD, the control here, let's see. Um, we have cruise altitude, which is the altitude uh, the weapon maintains in uh, flight level. Uh, currently zero means uh, maintain launch altitude. Let's just turn into the target for a second. We'll set is the weapon the weapon is not timed out three minutes we'll just turn into the target and hope it will catch up with us uh let's set cruising altitude of flight level 160 say now go around short means one minute outbound lag then the missile will turn back roughly another minute of uh turn the 180 turn slightly more oh, weapons out Two minutes uh, is go out for two minutes, then turn. So it's three minutes and then two minutes back. So this gives you about five minutes from overhead to overhead. So if we launch for a 10 minutes flight and so on. 
anyway weapons now uh, steered autopilot is automatically on and it will maintain heading towards this uh, the speed we'll turn it off later and I'll show you however let's just uh, launch the missile for a second yeah now uh, it will however not uh, go into terminal mode and um, acquire the target you'll need to do it manually right now we're going faster than the missiles the missile is behind us and it's outside of the reception cone let's turn to weapon 8 and we should be requiring on the aft antenna here you go uh, now uh, we have missile flight parameters on the top right those are data towards the speed we lost it again in the dead zone it will show up in a minute once it goes from side to side here you go and uh, the flight the, the missile will fly to the SPI as long as the autopilot is on uh, you don't have to keep it on uh, you can turn it off if you will and I will do it and show you a trick or two about aligning with a target um, we will not use the go-around capability uh, in this uh, tutorial because I just think it shouldn't be uh, because of the way it goes around on this particular target we'll be aiming at we'll have minuscule target to hit it's possible but because we're going for the strafing target if you look at the PDF uh, we will uh, come roughly knife edge on if we go around and we will have a pole to hit. You can do that, but we won't do it on the first flight, let's call it. Now, uh, missile is currently maintaining roughly 1600 feet because that's what we told him. We were kind enough to ask him to. And uh, looks like we have a bit of a wind. Yeah, 14 knot crosswind. Nice. Um, as we go towards waypoint 8, we'll start turning back. Uh, you should always aim to have the 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 missile the the aircraft stable on a leg about three minutes long on the last uh, segment of the flight. And you want to be stabilized on this leg when missile flight time is roughly two minutes out. Currently, uh, we have time of flight uh, since launch almost reaching three minutes, and time to impact roughly three minutes. Um, so we should be hitting the uh, the waypoint eight. Uh, pretty close to when we want to turn about 2 minutes 30 to impact once the turn is complete will take us about a minute to turn uh, the missile should be about 15 miles out giving us a minute and a half to acquire target now we can use the cruise altitude uh, and tweak it around all the time if you have low clouds you can dive beneath them uh, and every other variation if you have mountains you can climb above and then descend just remember to maintain line of sight if you go uh, behind the mountain it won't go very well I'm letting the autopilot take the turn we should lose weapon uh, once uh, the target goes no the, the, the back of the aircraft is pointed toward the target um, there you go we lost signal let's switch to the HUD view uh, as you can see we're turning away and uh, trying to reacquire the target which is down there not yeah we can't see it it's south of our position way south here we acquire the missile again let's go weapon and we lost it the little indicator shows us uh, the little plus with the dotted line show us last known position of the missile it's in the cone but because we're uh, we have our wing blocking the the line of sight we kinda not getting it 
uh, we should be picking it up as we uh, start to level out and I'll switch back the HSD to this side go back here and switch this to weapon view now most of the things I'll do are uh, TGP oriented we'll go over it very very quickly as I go it's everything is in the uh, in the BMS manual some of it are, is also in the training mission video let's go set weapon and we can see the target area uh, we have the buildings on the right those we have the SAM dugout the warehouse on the left and you can see a tiny dot which is our target first thing I'll do is update the speed the, the triangle is the speed the way the the point the autopilot takes the weapon to and I'll update the speed to be on our target this is done by double clicking the TMS right click click and there we go I'll turn autopilot off so now I have azimuth steering and not the uh, the autopilot I want to go towards those two buildings in order to open up the angle so what I'll do is TMS right long and we should see the weapon steering what's going on nope I don't want to go around cancel that TMS right long yes yes behave behave okay now we can see the cross going in you need to hold TMS uh, long uh, until the weapon is aligned and now I'm looking to the left and the missile still going towards those buildings not trying to descend or anything but you know what let's send it down to 090, 9000 feet, it will give us about 7000, be easier to locate the target from that altitude. Uh, we're almost at the target, let's zoom out. There we go. The missile is still flying towards those buildings because we have autopilot turned off and we're looking at the azimuth, the target is coalescing and I like it here. Let's hit TMS right along again. And the missile should start going in. I'm pretty confident about target position. I'll just go terminal. And the missile will align itself on the cross. I will update the target position again in case I want to go around, though I won't be. I'll hit TMS up, now I'm on ground stabilized mode and I'm sure this is the target so I'm arming the fuse with TMS up long. Unlike the GBA-15, this missile because of the mass and inertia is very stable on final approach and smack in the middle. And that's it. Uh, it took us what, 8 minutes of flight time? I'm not sure about the timing and we're almost at the web point good uh, and what I want this yes just pause and go show you external view anyway so uh, we just demonstrating how we're hitting a strafing target from what was it 60 something miles away 75 doesn't really matter I could have done it from any range it took us about eight uh, to nine minutes to fly out we could have go around uh, as I said I didn't do a go around in this bit because it will be edge on uh, on the pole and it will make the video long as very very long it will add at least four minutes if not more uh, but feel free to play around. I would recommend uh, practicing on the SAM dugout on the you know the western side of the runway. Play around with that uh, with the go around because it's omnidirectional thingy. You, it, it looks you know it's it's big enough to be noticed from every direction. Finding a little target pole is very very hard uh, initially. Once you gain confidence go ahead and have fun i would also recommend tr starting from go around long to give yourself more time to reorient uh once the missile hits the target you'll get used to it 
Now, um, the Dalaila is very useful for hunting mobile SAM sites uh, in conjunction with the with the uh, AGSD uh, line of sight indicating an indicator. You can mark a target in the AGSD. You'll have a little line of sight reticle. Just put another sensor on it, say the radar or uh, the TGP, and it'll give you ballpark location. Then all you need to do is fire off the weapon onto that uh, location, this ballpark location, and use the the speed, the autopilot, and all the capabilities the weapon gives you to uh, fine tune the impact point to where you want it. Uh, find the target, go around if you're not sure, and you'll be able to hunt mobile SAMs. Another good option is to fire long range on last known position of SA-10s or Patriot missiles and use the uh, go around option to pinpoint the target to gain confidence. Just launch it from 70 miles, speculative launch on where you think the target is. You can confirm using uh, AGST if you want to fine tune the area of relative to target position to confirm the target position. Launch it, let it go, and uh, go around once, or twice until you you're confident that you found the fire control radar and smack it. Uh, just remember. Flight time is 23 minutes, so you need to be stabilized on the terminal mode going in for the kill by, say, time of flight of 20 minutes. Don't take too long because fuel consumption of the missile is affected by cruising altitude and weather. So if the missile is uh, facing a headwind or you're flying it low because of cloud cover, it will consume more fuel, causing the flight time to be shorter. In addition to that, the missile will fly in denser, denser air, meaning true airspeed will be lower, so less distance to cover. Bear that in mind. So roughly 70 nautical miles for uh, a launch is good. Just remember, stay under 80 miles out uh, to keep the target de-aggregated. So have fun practice and go whip some Sam ass. Goodbye.